Hi, welcome to the fourth video in the mutual fund series. This is Karthik Rangappa. In this video, I'll talk to you about the net asset value of a fund. I'll simplify a few things to help you understand the concept quickly. Imagine a young fund manager approaches five different families to manage their funds. Given that the fund manager is young, the families decide to invest a small amount and see how it goes. Assume this is how the families invest. Family 1 invests 65,000 rupees. Family 2 invests 1 lakh. Family 3 invests 50,000. Family 4 invests 35,000. Family 5 invests 25,000. In total, there's 2.75 lakhs. Now all the funds are pooled together by the fund manager. Now in return of the money invested, the fund manager will now allot notional units to all the families. Each notional unit is assigned a value of rupees 10 and the units are allotted in the same ratio as the invested amount. So family 1 has invested 65,000 rupees, therefore they'll get 6.5 thousand units. Likewise, family 2 gets 10,000 units, family 3 gets 5,000 units, family 4 and 5 get 3.5 and 2.5 thousand units respectively. Now let's assume family 4 immediately changes their mind and wants to withdraw all the funds invested. So they will have to surrender 3.5 thousand units to the fund manager at the rate of 10 rupee per unit and get back 35,000 in exchange. Anyway, now that the fund manager has 2.75 lakhs, the funds has to be invested in the stock market. Assume that the fund manager decides to invest in 10 stocks in equal proportion. Basically, the investment in each stock is 27,500. While each stock trades at a different price, the amount invested will remain the same. Here is how the table looks. So for example, stock 1 is trading at 88 rupees per share. So 27,500 divided by 88 gives 313 shares. Likewise for all the other stocks. So on day one, at market open, the fund manager deploys the entire corpus of 2.75 lakhs. As the day progresses, the stock price change. Let's assume this is how the stock price change by the end of the day. You see, stock one at the start of the day was trading at 88 rupees per share. By the end of the day, there was a 3% increase and the stock is now trading at 90.65 which also means that the money invested in stock 1, that is 27,500, also grows by 3% and the value becomes 28,325. Stock 2, on the other hand, has declined by 0.85%, so would the investment in that stock. The sum total of all the stocks by factoring in the increase and decrease in each stock will give the overall value of the fund. So in this case, the fund manager on day one has managed to generate a profit of 2,844 rupees. Hence, the total value of the fund itself grows to 2,77,844. In other words, the fund made a profit of 1.034% on day one. Now here is an interesting bit. If family four wishes to withdraw by surrendering 3,500 units, each costing 10 per unit, then they'll get back 35,000. But then the fund manager has generated a profit and this profit belongs to the families in the same proportion of their investment. So to distribute the profits in an equitable manner, the value of the units should increase proportionately. In this case, the value of the unit should increase by 1.034%. So if you do the math, you'll soon realize that the value of each notional unit is 10.1034 and not rupees 10. So here's the interesting thing. If family four now wishes to withdraw their funds, they will have to surrender 3,500 units with each unit valued at 10.1034. Hence, if you do the math, 3,500 into 10.1034, so the family will get rupees 35,361.9 paisa. Now let's assume there's a new family, family six, which also wants to invest 35,000. Now the number of units they will get will be at the new notional value of 10.1034. So 35,000 divided by 10.1034 will give them 3,464.18 units. So the point I really want to drive here is that each unit represents the market value of the assets. Stocks are assets and the units are referred to as the asset value. Now think about this for a second. When a fund manager purchases stocks, there are expenses involved. It could be brokerage charges or the taxes paid to the government. Plus there are expenses like electricity and internet. The fund manager can actually deduct these charges from the asset value and that's the reason why these units are also called the net asset value. 
So in a sense, the net asset value of a mutual fund is equal to the actual NAV minus all the expenses incurred while managing the fund. So the concept of NAV is one of the most basic things that you'll have to understand while dealing with mutual funds. Of course, I've oversimplified the math involved in calculating the net asset value of a mutual fund. The idea is to help you understand what a NAV is and not really to calculate NAV. I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we'll discuss the fact sheet of a mutual fund.